Hey yo guys, welcome to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews, and today is our final review for Cryptoriana, The Seductiveness of Decay by Cradle of Filth. So I'm going to kick this off here. I'm going to talk about some of the stuff I liked and not so much liked about the album. And I'm going to start off with the track Death and the Maiden. Now, Death of the Maiden, as we mentioned in our first impressions video, is both of our least favorite songs. And I'd still say that it's still my least favorite song. Now, when we mentioned that in the first video, I had a couple comments below disagreeing with us, which is cool. We like when people disagree, agree, it doesn't matter. We just like hearing your opinions. But one commenter said that they felt that this song was epic. And I listened to it again several times, really trying to find the epicness in that song and I feel like it's epic in length because it's it's a long song it's almost nine minutes long but it's not epic in content now when I think of an epic Cradle of Filth song I think of songs like um, Lust More Than Orgasm like just like a long killer song like that this to me it's too on the mellow side so for that reason it's still my worst song on the album it's not a bad song though that's something I gotta make clear because when we say something like worst song on the album, we're not saying the song's bad. We're just saying as far as the whole, the whole, all the tracks go, it's kind of bottom of the pack. Still a good song. I still enjoy listening to the song, but it just lacks the oomph. It lacks the punch. It lacks the energy, and you know, it lacks that that real raw cradle feel that I really crave when I'm listening to this band. But still a good song. Moving on to one of my favorite songs on the album is the title track of the album. Now this is weird because when I listened to this album, when I feel like last week when I first listened to it, Wester Vespertine was my favorite song and I thought that was great. Then uh, A Night at Catafalque Man Manor became my favorite song and then um, you know it just it kept bouncing back and forth but then the one I'm listening to the most recently is The Seductiveness of Decay. Now, this song is one of those songs where you can listen to it a hundred times and you'll still notice new things each time. So most recently, I noticed the smallest thing, smallest, most subtle thing in the background, and it became my favorite thing on the entire album. Now, if you listen to the song, there's a line that he says, I'm horrible with lyrics, but he says something like, the smokestack darkens skies. And when he says skies, this is during the chorus, by the way, when he says skies, there's a harmonized vocal in the background where he screams the word skies, and I swear it's the highest note on the album, and it sounds like a soaring eagle. I love it so much. It's epic. Not to mention this song has some of the best Danny screams on the album. It's got, I wouldn't say one of the best guitar solos, but it's the shortest, sweetest guitar solo, but it's a trade-off. So you got, um, you know, one guy starts, does a little wicked guitar solo lick, and then the other guy, you know, picks it right up and does one right back. And it's short and sweet. Freaking awesome, though. This song also has a very uh, Iron Maiden-esque riff to it which I thought was really cool. I know Cradle of Filth is huge. Um, they have a huge influence in Iron Maiden, so it's nice to see that and recognize that right away. But um, overall though, this this song has, this album story has great songs. And I mean, I could sit here and talk about each song individually and just pick out little things here and there about each one. But uh, I'm just going to hand the floor over to you so you can uh, share some thoughts about your song. Because I don't yeah. want to blab well, too long. I, but, I so. find it funny. You mentioned you can uh, spend this whole time talking about every song and pick out all these small things. Because I could do the same. I found through listening to this album for a week, loving every song, I felt you know all these things would just show up to me. And um, just to mention a little bit about Death and the Maiden, I find it actually does have a kind of epicness to it. Because it's a long song. Longest song on the album. Almost yep. nine minutes. This is the last song on the regular album before the bonus tracks start. Yeah. So when you take that into account, it being the final track, the way it builds up, the way that it's slower and then gets faster and gets a little bit more intense, and then the ending kind of breaks down and it has you know all this stuff that's fading that's out. That's true. Yeah. It's very conclusive, and I found that that was really effective for being the last track on this album. Yeah. So that that kind of made it look a lot better in my eyes from when we thought. You know, is it the last one? Because he makes a good point. We, I never we, actually really thought about that. Exactly, so, yeah. being the last one, a lot of um, artists like to have their last song. It's a big, epic, grand finale. Yeah. All this crazy stuff going on. So, 
just, you know, I, is Death of the Maiden my least favorite? It's really hard to tell. It's, you know, I find it hard to really pick and choose favorites and least favorites from this album because every song has something about it that jumps out at me and I'm just, wow, this is great. Mm -hmm. um, one thing to mention, this is a really small thing. In Vengeful Spirit, the guitars, I believe this is Vengeful Spirit, the guitars are trading solos. One of them, at the very end of his solo, it's really subtle, but you can hear the guitar start cutting out like he's taking his patch cord out. And it sounds so cool. The intensity of like that solo section is so crazy. So it it, it totally fits with how it's like all starts cutting I'm out. Like trying to picture end. what you're talking about. I have to go back and listen to it yeah, again. But exactly, yeah. but it's really cool when you notice it. Like, oh shit, like this guy's going off. It's unique um, little things like that too that stand out. Exactly, right? exactly. But you know, at first, like last week, I said my favorite was Heartbreak and Seance. Now I can't even choose a favorite. There's too many great stuff great songs in this album. I found Heartbreak and Seance all the way to Vesp Wester Vespertine. All three of those songs, the main grooves just get me so yeah. much. Of, of all three of those songs, the gallops, the just the driving Amazing force. riff work. Amazing, oh, awesome riff work. Incredible, incredible stuff. Yeah. And one thing about Cradle of Filth that I love in terms of riff work is Danny's vocals rhythmically are always, you know, kind of stagnant. Yeah, you get a lot of eighth notes just da 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 da, da with uh, the vocals he's singing, but it fits perfectly upon these grooves and it makes yep. them drive so much harder than than it would be if it wasn't that way. So and that's really common of this band. Mm -hmm. Um but it's it's beautifully done on this album. I found that was just incredible man. Uh um to talk about the the two bonus tracks which are the night at Catafalque Manor yep. and uh, Alice in Hell. Um, I don't think we really talked about Night at Catafalque Manor too, too much uh, last week. We only mentioned that, you know, it sounds like older Cradle, which it does. It does very it, much it, so. It gives that total, like, Midian-esque vibe. More like Cruelty of the Beast. Like, around around that. Yeah, definitely the older school vibe, for older. sure. And it, it sounds great. And I find, you know, another small thing about it that was really cool to mention is you can hear in the main groove, like, an acoustic guitar kind of just... Yeah. You know, throwing the chords out, which I found really cool sounding. And it gave it a more unique kind of body to uh, that song, mm -hmm. as opposed to some of the other ones. Yeah, I think uh, I think Night at Catafalque Manor is actually one of the best songs on the album. But uh, since it is a bonus track, we don't actually include bonus tracks or cover songs when we do our reviews. So it's it sucks because it's... Pro it could be the best song on the album, as far as my pretty, opinion goes. Pretty damn good. Because as far as like the solo, there's a sick solo in this song. Um, other than the very first track, which has Danny's best scream on the album, oh, uh, A Night at Catafalque Manor has the second best scream on the album. <laughs> the song just slays. It's epic as hell. It's got that old school vibe, brings you back. It's everything a Cradle of Filth fan wants, but it's a bonus track, which I don't know why it's a bonus track. That's really weird. But because of because it's a bonus track, we don't include it when we score the album. We think that's a little unfair. We just score the primary songs that are on the album. But um, other than that, Alice in Hell still, we mentioned this before, a great cover song. I never skipped it once. You know, every time Same. it came on, I love listening to it. It's great. This, the song in general is, is a great song. Yeah. I really love listening to it. So, you know, I'll go back and forth listening to this cover, listening to the original and yeah. comparing them. Yeah. This, they did this cover justice because it, sound, it sounded great. It sounded original by the terms of Cradle's style. Yeah. So it was just a really cool cover. But like I said, we can literally go and, uh, and and talk about every song on this album. We can talk about amazing parts, you know, little subtle things that we noticed, all kinds of stuff. But we'd literally be talking here for, for all night long. So <laughs> uh, let's wrap up the video. Uh, let's hear uh, the score that you give to Cryptoriana, The right. Seductiveness of Decay. All right, so I feel this might be pretty obvious from how much I've been talking up on this album. All these songs are fantastic. If you're a Cradle fan, you will love this album. If you're not into Cradle, perhaps this could be a good uh, entry point. Maybe, yeah. it's, it's a unique album by Cradle standards, but I feel like it has enough to give you an idea of what this band is about. This album gets my toe tag. Incredible album. You guys should definitely check this out. Now, what do you give it? Uh, I agree. I feel like, uh, you know, you said this is a unique album by Cradle Standards, and that's that's a subjective thing, but I feel like I agree with you on that, because you listen to this album, and I feel like they took little steps, subtle little steps, to make this different, but not so different to the point where it doesn't sound like Cradle, where it sounds out of place, or like it doesn't fit the band. It still sounds like hardcore Cradle. They really tapped into the old school vibes with a lot of songs, which I feel like they missed that mark on the last couple albums. Hammer of the Witch was pretty good, 
but the last few albums seem to miss that old school vibe. They kind of went with a kind of a new vibe, but this one they reached that old school vibe. You know, they're reconnecting with old school fans, but also bringing some new fresh elements to adapt and appease new people. So definitely, I think this is a top tier album. These guys put out amazing work. This, of course, gets my toe tag. I'm a Cradle of Filth fanboy. I would have been very disappointed if this got anything less than my toe tag, <laughs> but this gets my toe tag, and that's without scoring A Night at Catafalque Manor, by the way. So you can't go higher than a toe tag exactly. as far as our ratings go, but that's without that song anyway. So that's it, man. Two toe tags. Two toe tags. This gets added to the coveted list this of two toe tag recipients. The first band on our channel with multiple two toe tag recipients. Yep. Damnation Previously, in a Day. Yep, we reviewed got Damnation in a Day. That got two toe tags. So yep. that's, that's groundbreaking. Yep. First band with two albums to get uh, that prestigious title. I. So that's it, though, guys. Leave your thoughts below. Let us know what you guys thought after listening to this album all week. And let us know if you agree with our ratings and all that fine stuff. Like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. And be tuned in because we got lots more stuff coming. We got reaction videos, all kinds of stuff. Um, the next couple months are literally jacked Jam -packed. with metal releases. And we literally can't keep up with them. So we're going to have to skip a couple. We might do them later down the road, but... We're having to pick and choose on certain weeks which albums to do. Yeah, there's, there's a lot coming so, out. So, um, yeah, weeks. stay tuned though. We got lots of stuff coming, guys. So, uh, hit that subscribe button if you guys are new to the channel. I'm Vile Self. I'm TV Fish. And we'll see you guys on the next one later.